Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Ben. Together we are 15 degrees north. Today we're going to show you the sights and sounds of Georgia. Georgia. Georgia is a country in the Caucasus, which is a group of ex-Soviet countries sandwiched between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea on the border between Europe and Asia. The Caucasian mountains form Georgia's border with Russia to the north, while to the south it borders Azerbaijan, Armenia and Turkey. Its capital is Tbilisi, which contains about a third of the country's population, which sits in a steep valley around the Kaura River and has been the center of Georgian civilization for 1500 years. For centuries, the city was known as Tiflis, its Persian pronunciation, until 1936 when the Soviet leadership officially reverted its name back to the Georgian version, Tbilisi. Might that have had something to do with who was the leader of the Soviet Union at the time, the most famous Georgian ever to have lived? Who's that? Well, Comrade Joseph Stalin. I'd say he might have had something to do with it. More on him later. Of the three Caucasian states, Georgia is the one closest aligned with Europe, reflecting its current status as an EU candidate country. It's a Christian country, littered with Eastern Orthodox churches, and the city is littered with buildings built in the European styles, including Nouveau, Boa, and Neoclassical. I was picturing Georgia as grey, concrete, post-Soviet, communist-style uh, architecture, but actually it's far more like a southern European city. It's hot, it's arid, and the architecture is old and beautiful. Tbilisi spent much of its history passing back and forth between empires because its location and the axis between Europe and Asia and subsequent proximity to the Silk Road meant that everyone wanted to control it. However, that didn't stop the Georgians themselves from wanting to control their own land. Between the 11th and 13th centuries, Georgia was a flourishing kingdom that covered most of the Caucasus. The Georgian Golden Age saw Tbilisi became Georgian's capital, which King David IV relocated from Kutaisi in 1121, and it became the most important literary and cultural centre in the region. Then came Georgia's greatest leader, the famed Tamar the Great, the country's very first queen, who consolidated the empire, patronised and established the country's significant presence on the world stage. It's just a big shame that the Mongols had to come along and ruin everything, which started the dominant effect that saw Georgia pass between the Iranians, Mongols, Timurids, Ottomans and Russians. Georgia finally became independent in 1991. In the region, Georgia is seen as a major tourist destination. During its days in the Soviet Union, Georgia was one of its warmest and most ancient cities, so great care was taken in preserving the city's aesthetic appeal. The city makes much of its topography too, with cable cars and funiculars linking the valley floor with high vantage points for sweeping views across the city. And it really does look gorgeous from both. Something you notice very quickly upon arrival in Georgia is the presence of a multitude of dogs roaming free across the country. These are wild strays, but they are remarkably well looked after, with each dog tagged and neutered, meaning that they are docile and not aggressive at all. The opposite, in fact. We saw so many of them who were more than content to just hang out with humans on the street and live their best lives on the streets of Tbilisi. Although, one big mystery for us was where was all the dog poo? With so many of dogs everywhere you go, you'd expect a plethora of dog poo, but we didn't see any at all. Maybe the dogs in Georgia don't poo. Or maybe there are Georgians whose job is to follow dogs around all day and clear up their mess. With Georgia such a hot destination for Russians, it's hardly surprising that in all the ex-Eastern Bloc countries, you can find Georgian restaurants everywhere. 
We fell in love with Georgian food while traveling in Eastern Europe several years ago, so we were so excited to finally get to try some. Our favorites are the cheesy eggy pizzas called kachapuri and the dumplings, kinkali. What is this? So this is kinkali, a dumpling filled with soup and meat, and it's yummy. How do you eat it? Like this. He's sucking, biting, then sucking. Oh, he's sucking out that soup. <laughs> And now he's eating the tasty loveliness. Ooh. From Tbilisi, we hired a car and headed north into the Caucasian mountains. This mountain range is vast. In fact, it's the biggest and tallest mountain range in Europe, with eight of Europe's top ten tallest mountains within it. Well, but at least France has a tallest. Um, no, actually it doesn't. Mont Blanc is the seventh tallest mountain in Europe, with six mountains in Russia and Georgia dwarfing it. Lesson love, but that assumes that Russia and Georgia actually are in Europe, which they're not. There will be plenty of Georgians who disagree with you on that. Russia is Russia, and Georgia is further east than the Asian part of Turkey. So, how can there be Europe? And this is the debate we had the entire time <laughs> that we were in Georgia. This is the monument of friendship between Georgia and Russia. A friendship that I would imagine is a little bit strained at the moment. The further north we go, the closer to the Russian border we get. And we were presented with something we had never seen before. A line of lorries spanning over a hundred kilometers, queuing to get across the border. We could not believe what we were seeing. Mile upon mile upon mile, bumper to bumper, along the side of the road, spanning high across a mountain pass. Big sections of the northern parts of Georgia are disputed territory too, with Abkhazia and South Ossetia occupied by Russian forces, and this road travelled along the eastern border of the latter. So we decided to drive into the Georgian countryside today. How did that go? Not so great. <laughs> we've hired a car, and we've never had any issues with hired cars before, no. but we were driving up a mountain, two hours outside uh, T Tbilisi, and uh, unfortunately the engine light started to well, flash, yeah. and then we lost power, down. and we had to pull over. In now, other words, a car is screwed. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so and now we are we're, stranded in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, quite near to the Russian border, <laughs> in fact, and um, also near the disputed South Ossetian region. So that's region. fun. However, um, we found a beautiful restaurant, homemade traditional food with gorgeous views. At least it gave us the opportunity to try more Georgian food while we waited five hours for a replacement car. Much later than we had planned, we arrived at the Gurgiti Monastery, Georgia's most iconic landmark that sits high in the mountains. You park your car at the bottom and then you have to get a taxi off-road, which goes all over these crazy, bumpy uh, paths. Oh my God, we're gonna die. <laughs> Normally you can just drive to the top, but because we arrived late, the road was shut, forcing us to take this off-road service up to the mountains. We made it. Thank alive. God. <laughs> Ugh. The Gurkhati Trinity Church sits at an elevation of 2,170 meters high against the backdrop of the vast Mount Kazbek. And just like most of our luck that day, we arrived to find the mountain completely covered in cloud. The church dates from the 14th century, but its isolated location that is dwarfed by the vastness that surrounds it reminds Georgian of their own situation, isolated and overshadowed by their behemoth neighbour. It has become the symbol of Georgia and a treasured national icon. Further west and we come to a pillar of rock on which a monk has lived for over 20 years. Food is delivered to him via a rope and pulley system, but I wonder what he does all day. I reckon he listens to gangster rap and plays Call of Duty. Our final stop in Georgia is the town of Gori. Gori was the hometown of Stalin, and its center you can find the Joseph Stalin State Museum, which was opened in 1957 and contained the preserved house in which Stalin was born. 
The museum was closed in 1989, but has since reopened and remains a popular, albeit weird, tourist attraction. Debate has raged about its content, with the Georgian government wanting to reorganize its collection to become the Museum of Russian Aggression since the South Ossetia War in 2008. In fact, the building's facade was covered with a banner for a whole decade that declared the museum Russian propaganda, but this has since been removed. Now the museum is a strange curiosity that has been left unchanged since Soviet times, glorifying a contentious history figure that Georgia seems both ashamed and proud of in equal measure. There is talk of transforming it into a museum about the museum, but again this is yet to happen. But with money being pumped into the Georgian economy by the EU to improve its tourism infrastructure, it won't be long until Georgia becomes a tourist hotspot as this tiny eastern nation forges its links with Europe even deeper. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. And follow us on Instagram at 15 degrees north. Make sure to tune in to our next video to see where in the world we end up next. See ya. Bye. <laughs>